This is Stephanie at Hightower Stitching with today's video, A Place for Embroidery and Quilting. People who like using their hands and like to quilt also like to do other things because you get tired of that and you want to change over to something else. So that's what's happened to me now and I've changed over to embroidery for a little while. And I've done that for many, many years. And there are a lot of ways that you can use embroidery in your quilts. These are just some strips. This was a strip that I did earlier. And then I said, I'm just going to save it for something. And then one day I found that I had some great material I had been saving. And it was the colors that I had used. And so I turned it into a pillow. And you can't see it, but it is quilted. The pillow's quilted on the front and the back. And it's so, what I liked about it was when I was first starting out and didn't have much money, I just loved it because all I needed was some of some thread. And I used DMC then, so that's what I've got. And when I bought a series that were the same color, I would actually hook them onto my cardboard and make notches to catch them so that they'd be together. And then I got lucky and I brought, I bought em, actual embroidery needles. And the difference between those needles and others is that it's got a larger eye. Because you'll find that your thread has six threads together. And you can choose to use one, two, however many you can do. But then you have to make sure your eye it will go through the eye and there are some tricks to do it if you have a smaller eye to using uh, more threads also and the, one of the things that I did was I bought an iron-on book and this one I really liked is it's very old and it actually still works and it had a variety of different things in there that I could um, take an iron on the funny thing a little bit ago was I came in and looked at the one I've been practicing on now because I have it done any for a while and you'll see here's the one that I just finished and I was always lately I had seen that people had a special mat for ironing it when they got their uh, piece finished instead of putting it on the ironing board which tends to be hard and it, they would use something soft and I said well I'm going to try using um, some layers of batting so I just took three or four layers of batting and um, put my piece on there upside down and pressed it and then when I turned it over I was so pleased to see how flat it is because uh, no matter how tight your hoop is sometimes you still get some um, gathering in the places and what I wanted to do today was as we were talking about ways that you can use your embroidery in the quilting would be just to show you three of the main stitches and once you, if you have those, that you can do a lot of stitching. You can draw your own letters, and you can do that. Uh, do that. You can get fonts off the computer, and use those as your plan for making your letters. One of the things that you'll need would be a nice hoop, a hoop that will hold the material taut. And this is the last one that I just got, and it actually has an open and close lever at the top and it's worked pretty good as far as keeping it taut. So I'm going to take the bottom and slide it under and I'm going to put the hoop, the fabric near an edge and I'm going to take and slide it gently on and then with this one I can just wheel it until it gets closed. Now sometimes I would use it depends on the kind of material, how heavy your material is. But in this case, this was not as heavy as I wanted, so I used two layers of it. And that's what I had done earlier, too, to stabilize the back. And let's start with the first stitch that I had in mind. And I have threaded my needle. It's got a big eye. And this one, I actually had like three threads. I put those through there and then came down and knotted it on the end. So I have six layers right there. And you may not do it that thick for what you're doing, but for this I wanted it to be thick and that's what I used yesterday. So I'm just gonna start with a straight stitch that is used in stems and around and come up. You get your thread with your thumb 
All right, go down in and then come back up where you started. And don't pull anything tight and just check it and, and, uh, and then go down a little ways from where the last stitch started. Come back up. And then do like that and you, you can get it nice and smooth. You'll see that in some of the others. And then you just keep moving your way across. Go down. Come back up where your last hole was and go through. This one is one if you take your time, of course most of the embroidery is taking your time to get the stitches to look like you want them to. And when I would finish with this particular row, I'd go all the way down and knot it off on the back, just run it through some of the stitches. So I'm going to get down here and I can actually do one of them that I, the next one that I wanted you to look at. And it's going to be the satin stitch. And you can see my fabric's gotten a little loose, so I'm going to tighten it back up again, tighten it. And if you're using white fabric, I want to suggest that you wash your hands before you start because every time you grab the rack and you're putting your hands around the edge, it gets dirty. Or sometimes I'll just take and fold up the edge to keep it from getting dirty. And on this one, I'm going to do a satin stitch. I'm going to start here at the wide section. And it's a really simple. Just go up and down. And then put the next stitch close to it. And I try to cover the blue. Because I'm not going to wash this when I'm finished. I have never had to do that. All right, I've just made the second stitch. I'm going to take and go in there and I'm going to smooth it. And it's a little hard to see when they're this little. But you get a really nice satiny look. And go down carefully. And then rub it again. And there you can see that it's coming together. And you just do that all the way. And you say, well, what about when you have a big place like this one right here? What I usually do on that, and I'm going to use that same green right now, I'm going to start right here towards the middle. And I'm going to go at an angle. Not a real big one, but one that you can see. I start with an angle. Pretend that was a leaf. It's a great way to do a leaf. And I'd come down, get the next one. And go down carefully next to that one. And get one more and see if we can get the, the satin part showing up. And then if you think you missed a place like I did there, because this is so far away from my eyes, I can just go back right up there in the middle and travel down in there and put him in there and smooth it and it's nice and you, once you get used to it you get all the way up there then I go down and I can go back and go that direction and in this quickie lesson the last one I wanted to do was a French knot which is just when you have a little dot and you'll see that in another one of them so grab your rack have your left hand Grab your thread, you're going to bring your needle over, and you're going to wrap it about three times. One, two, three. And then carefully slide those towards the end. But before you get there, you can already go back down into the fabric. And don't, don't pull your left hand really tight. Just hold it, and then it'll slide right to, through there, and you've made a French knot. Does it work every time? No, and sometimes a French knot will go through the bottom, and so you just come back up to the top and do it again. So I've got it up. I'm holding this gently over here. I'm going to go one, two, three. I'm going to let that slide down all the way, and I'm going to come close to that other hole, and I'll slide my needle through. Now, if you grab that left one and you start pulling on it, 
your knot's going to get smaller and you're going to have a hard time getting the needle through it. And that's a simple French knot. Here is my bucket of some of the colors that I have. I have three buckets. And one day when I wanted to get organized, they were always on cardboard, but they had numbers. And so I got them so I could see those and put them in order. Because sometimes you pick up a project that you want to embroider and they tell you the colors that they want that you could use and you can go by their guide and then but there again the reminder to put the colors that are in the same group uh, as close to each other so that you can find your different shades and then I want you to go back to the first one and now see if you can see the, the straight stitch that connect the leaves to each other the leaves are satin stitches, the hearts are satin stitches, and then you've got the French knots, which are the yellow centers for the flower. And with those three, you can have a lot of fun. Um, one of the other things is, once you get the straight stitch going, you can actually just do the letters. And they, I think these might have been uh, uh, satin stitched. But I wasn't going to be able to do it that way. So I actually just made row after row of um, dark blue to fill in these letters and satin stitch for the little rosebuds. So this is Stephanie at High Terra Stitching. One of the things that I like is to use when I'm going to make a special label is to make labels for the back of my quilts. So that, And there are a lot of other ways that you can use embroidery in quilts. This is Stephanie at High Tower Stitching. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit like.